Taylor dropped the other day. We're sitting, just waiting for the host, and all of a sudden, flipping a shit, cause Percy Jackson is on the screen. The good thing about already having seen the first movie and knowing that it shat all over the book, we have such low expectations that everything will impress us. Bum bum bum. 20th Century Fox. We dive underwater and we immediately jump into a recap because, you know, it's been three years. We need it. The gods of Olympus are real. Pfft, shot of Olympus. Sometimes they have children with humans. Shot of Percy. Shot of Annabeth. Shot of Grover, who is not a half-blood, but okay. Someone's holding up a picture for Grover, it would appear. Then we get this wide shot of Chiron in this garden-y area. Maybe the Demeter cabin at Camp Half-Blood? We're pretty much like anyone else you meet. Then we flash to this cafe, which just seems so irrelevant in terms of what Percy is saying in the voiceover. We see this guy with eight arms. I don't know. It kind of confuses me because we know from movie one that there is no Miz. No one seems to question him. It's just a little weird. Percy's talking about how half-bloods are pretty much like anyone else with a few exceptions. And we flash to this eight-armed dude like he's a half-blood. Kind of misleading the audience that Grover's getting a coffee. Maybe this is supposed to be the coffee shop in New Mexico from the Titans curse? I just recently heard that this is going to be a trilogy of movies. I don't know why I said trilogy like a trilogy is ten. Three. Unless they're trying to pass this guy off as that monster. Million-handed one? Doubtful. That's a sad million-handed monster. Quick shot of Grover, Annabeth, Tyson, and Percy after having been dropped off by the cab of damnation. Tyson turns around with his one eye. Oh, the CGI. It would seem that Tyson's one eye doesn't last throughout this whole trailer. Maybe he's able to shield it himself. We have this other guy in the shot with Tyson here. I'm not sure exactly who he's supposed to be. I can't remember them consoling with any other person than Hermes before they leave on the quest. He kind of looks like Hades from the previous movie. We live in the only place that is safe for our kind. Sweeping shot of the trees. I didn't know this was a Twilight movie. We go to Camp Half-Blood, and it seems that there's been a disturbance and all of the kitties are running from their cabin. If we look closely, we can see Tyson in this shot. And Tyson is wearing sunglasses, which I find pretty conflicting because his eye is in the middle of his forehead, as we saw. When he's wearing the sunglasses, there's a lens here and a lens here, but there's no lens in the middle, so I feel like that'd be blinding him. You know what else? In the shot where they got dropped off by the Taxi of Damnation, he had two eyes. You see a magical barrier that's kind of protecting Camp Half-Blood? It looks a lot like the bubble around Hogwarts. Very cool. Okay, this is my favorite part of the trailer coming up here. Go inside to the oracle. We get this shot of Percy's hand sliding up the stairs to the attic where the oracle is. I am so excited that an oracle is in the films now. This attic looks exactly like I pictured it. I'm excited. Just this scene makes me very excited about the film. I don't care if everything else is weird because I'm already expecting that. The fact that there's an oracle, I'm like, oh, they did something right. <laughs> All the applause. Percy. All the candles light up like Bonnie entered the room. The way the oracle looks, man, exactly how I pictured it. Creepy, hippie mummy sitting in a chair. Now here, it seems that the oracle doesn't just spew out a rhymy riddle prophecy. She's here to fill us in on all the shit they left out of the previous movie. Kronos. Kronos, a force so evil. Three of his sons. Then we get a shot of Luke, and he's with the magic coffin that Kronos is in, that gold coffin. Now it seems here that they've they're, co they're definitely combining stuff that happens in different books because I'm pretty positive the fleece did not get laid on that coffin in the Sea of Monsters. But whatevs, you know, we're going with it. There's a magic bubble around it, and it seems we're in an amusement park. There's a big roller coaster wrapped around this area. It's like Luke is doing a magic trick for all his clone monster friends. I mean, the roller coaster makes the shot look super cool because it kind of frames him very nicely. Interesting choice. I wonder what other... Hijinks will go down at the amusement park. An amusement park has a lot of opportunity for hijinks to happen because there's all those amusement parky rides and attractions. It's like a Scooby-Doo movie. And now that I think about it, the Percy Jackson film compared to the book is very Scooby-Doo. You have that goofy adventure feeling rather than that Percy Jackson fun quest epic feeling that you have in the books. He's fated to 
rise again. He's ready to rise again. We get a close up of this gold coffin. It's like a fish tank. We can see inside it. I only assume those blobs inside the fish tank are the pieces of Kronos from Tartarus. We get this quick shot of Annabeth running. Which I would assume goes along with that shot from the beginning with all the kitties running from the cabins. Annabeth's hair is blonde. Exciting. We knew that was coming. We shoot back to the roller coaster. We get a close up of Luke actually flicking the blanket onto the coffin. Now we've got this guy who looks like Hades explaining to them about the Sea of Monsters, which the humans know as the Bermuda Triangle. Now we flash to what I can only assume is the trip to the Sea of Monsters. The book says we're in an old Civil War ship. Movie translation is yacht. Cool. Now we're back to Camp Half-Blood. We have a Clarice! I'm not sure exactly what's going on with her sliding down from the sky. It looks like she's sliding down from a rope that's holding a ship up in Pirates of the Caribbean. It would appear that they're in some sort of arena. Maybe this is where they usually do the chariot races. Now we have this line from Percy that I guess is supposed to be snarky and funny, but I just give Percy better lines. Book Percy is super funny. Movie Percy is like on the verge of being amusing. Maybe that line will be better in context. You don't even know what I was gonna say. You were gonna say that you're going after the fleece. Actually, you was gonna say we were. This August. A shot of them running in the forest. Oh my god, they're in the Forbidden Forest. <laughs> oh my god, it's Prisoner of Azkaban and the trio is behind Hagrid's house. Oh my god, it's the beginning of Prisoner of Azkaban when Harry gets on the night bus. So Annabelle throws her whistle out there and the Taxi of Damnation appears. It's very different to how it appears in the actual book. Annabeth is like super proud of herself for getting the taxi there. It looks like a New York City cat. Looks like the flying car in book two, The Chamber of Secrets. Are you not flashing to Prisoner of Azkaban right now? Is this not so reminiscent of the scene where the squished Jamaican head hanging from the dashboard of the night bus says that snarky little line before they shoot off into hyperspeed? <laughs> we get this very Scooby-Doo shot where Percy is holding on to both halves of the cab splitting apart. We hear Tyson say something for the first time. Do you think they'll have Tyson actually speaking like a caveman? Because I want him to. We will resurrect Kronos. Another shot of Kronos' coffin. They're really pushing Kronos' coffin in this trailer. We get this close-up shot of Luke's face. He's looking right at us. Is Luke vlogging? Are we Skyping? We know that movie half-bloods, they like to Skype. Maybe that's what's happening here. Maybe we got an email from him and it had a threatening video vlog that we all watched at Camp Half-Blood. I mean, it even looks like he's holding the camera. Okay, we get a quick shot of an obstacle course. So maybe this is what Clarice won at. Maybe they had a competition to see who would take the quest. And then we get a quick shot of this really big glowing locket. Am I just totally blanking on knowing what that is right They're now? They're asking Hermes for help. Hermes is Nathan Fillion, and I love him. I'm so excited that he's in this movie. The prophecy took it up like 50 notches. Nathan Fillion takes it about 50 notches more. He gives him the winds. I love this Nathan Fillion freak out about her opening the winds inside. Why would Annabeth be the one to do that though? I would think Percy would be the one to like, oh, let me open it in here and see what it does. Or even Tyson. Tyson with two eyes in this shot. Then we get this wide shot of the hippopotamophysicists. Those rainbow colored water horses. They look so cool. Dude, I was not expecting them to be so ginormous. I was picturing dolphin sized creatures that they held onto. This is giant seahorse. I don't- beautiful! Oh, I'm excited about this! Oh, shot with Tyson in the hippopotamus! It's interesting that Tyson has dreads. Quick shot of Tyson, Annabeth, and Percy running on a boardwalk. This must be the start of the roller coaster amusement park hijinks affair. And then we jump back to camp and we see this mechanical bull monster thing. And I don't remember a mechanical bull. I don't know if I'm just forgetting. My first thought when I saw this was, oh my god, it's Festus! But that's clearly not a dragon. Oh! Wait a minute. You know what? I kind of remember this. Did the camp get attacked? Tell me those aren't sharks. Percy says those aren't sharks. Now, but Percy would say something a lot cleverer right there. Let's let's be honest. Looks good though. It looks like the Maelstrom in Pirates of the Caribbean. Maybe it's just a huge mouth, like looking upward. Maybe it's that monster that sucks in the water and spits it back out. Remember that one? <sighs> August in real D, 3D, and digital 3D. I'm concerned we don't have an actual date in August because we know that TMI is coming out the 28th, so I would assume they're not going to be on the same weekend, maybe early August, but since they don't have a date, 
weird. Overall, I'm excited. I'm very happy with that trailer. I'm just excited to see Percy again. I mean, we haven't... It's been a while. It's been a while, and I miss him. What do you think of the trailer? Are you excited? Let me know. I'm Christine. I'll talk to you next time. Bye!